Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. My bio reads from troubled teen to teacher of the year, 100-pound weight loss, blah, blah, blah. You know the sort of thing you're working on in your before and after life story. So at the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. The little boy went the first day of school, and he got crayons and started to draw. He put colors all over his paper, for colors is what he saw. And the teacher said, what are you doing, young man? I'm painting flowers, he said. It's not the time for art, young man, and anyway, flowers are green and red. There's a time for everything, young man, and a way that it should be done. Now you show concern for everyone else, for you're not the only one. And she said, flowers are red, and green leaves are green. There's no need to see flowers any other way than the way that they've been seen. But the little boy said, there's so many colors in the rainbow, so many colors in the morning sun. So many colors in the flowers, and I see every one. The teacher said, you're sassy. Now there's way that things should be, and you'll paint flowers the way they should be. Now you repeat this after me. Flowers are red, and green leaves are green. There's no need to see flowers any other way than the way that they've been seen. So the teacher put him in the corner, and she said, this is for your own good. And you won't come out till you've got it right. And you're responding like you should. Well, finally, he got lonely and frightened thoughts filled his head. And he went up to the teacher. And this is what he said. Flowers are red and green leaves are green. There's no need to see flowers any other way than the way they've always been seen. Well, time went by like it always does. His family moved to another town. The little boy went to another school, and this is what he found. The teacher there was smiling, and she said, painting should be fun. And there's so many colors in a flower. Now let's use every one. The little boy painted flowers in neat rows of green and red. And when the teacher asked him why, this is what he said. Flowers are red, and green leaves are green. There's no need to see flowers any other way than the way they've always been seen. Did you ever tell your children, now that's the way you have to do it because I said so? Do you remember your parents or your teachers or any adults ever telling you, well, this is the way we've always done it? Even your colleagues, even those you work with or those you are involved in groups with can say, well, you know, we've always done it this way. Why do we need to change now? It can be wrapped in other ways. And they may even speak in nice tones and say, well, no, that's not the way we do it here. I'm so glad that we are able to have such creative ideas. I'm glad God has given us so many colors in the rainbow. And it seems like every year the colors in crayon boxes expanded as I was growing up. Some started out with 12 or 24, or I remember 64 or 100 and 200. And so many different shades and variations. And, you know, there's so many ways that we can talk about colors. We can talk about this being a lesson in creativity or about the little boy being a smart aleck and saying, well, I want to do it my way. No, I'm not going to do that. And Tone is very important. As a speech teacher, I spent a whole lesson plan on it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So one of the other issues with this is that Why would we only want to use two colors? If we have all of this available to us, why are we stuck in one little comfort zone? But it's easier using my red and green because that way I don't stand out. I won't draw attention to myself. And yet you see others that maybe aren't even half as gifted or talented as one particular artist, but they have the greatest time just loving what they're doing and splashing colors all over the paper. And 
I guess the third analogy we could make is God in his wisdom also created many colors of our skin. We have seen people with the whitest of white skin and just almost super white blonde hair. And then we've seen all of the spectrums in between to the darkest skin with the jet black hair. Isn't God good that he expanded his color box, so to speak, so that we could be involved with all of the colors and that we're not being smart aleck in talking about this issue, which is so upfront in our nation today. It has always been in our whole lifetime. If you haven't been around people of other color, my friend, I feel sorry for you because you've been limited to your little red and green analogy of, but it's safer this way. I'm in my own comfort zone in this way. Well, the author of this, Harry Chapin, this was a song, by the way, back in the 70s, I think. And I don't know if you ever heard that song or that poem, but I love it and used to share it when I was teaching teachers in the master's program, because this is something that we need to let students be creative without being against the rules, without being a smart aleck, with, you know, being in the confines of the lesson plan, so to speak. But why not let them add something extra? Teachers can learn from their students. Boy, I found that out my first week of teaching. Not only can they teach us how to teach, they can teach us how to expound and expand on a lesson plan so that it goes far beyond our little limited way of thinking as well. And that's why I love teaching so much, because I had such a variety of students through the years, such a variety of lesson plans that were ever evolving in our society, and such a wonderful opportunity to interact with all of God's people. I loved having foreign exchange students, Yulia, who is reading this in English from Russia right now, has been in contact with me through the years, ever since the 90s, and I am so glad that I have gotten to meet students and people from all different countries. I pray that you have as well, and if you haven't, you, you can expand by reading. You can expand upon friendships and circles of influence in your communities. Purposely seek out those who are not the same as your own little inner circle. I really dare you to do that if you haven't, because you will be so thrilled to go beyond what you knew to delve into backgrounds and stories of other people, of other cultures, what it would be like to grow up in Russia, what it would be like to grow up in inner Africa. My husband and I have been blessed to have been able to travel to 65 other countries, and we always wanted to see the cultural part of the country. We didn't want to see the touristy things and have dinner shows for the American tourist. No, we want to know the people. I wanted to see the similarities and the differences. I wanted to try their cuisine. I wanted to see how they lived. I wanted to explore in their culture as much as they were willing to share. I love when people are different. I love it when people pull all the colors out of the box, so to speak, and use them in their own native way, in their own upbringing, in their own culture. There are so many colors in the rainbow, so many colors in the sun, and so many colors in flowers, and I want to see everyone. God created us differently. The only thing he wants is for us to love him. He wants us to know that he loved us so much. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would have life abundantly and have life everlasting. That's all he wants from us, our love and to trust in him as our Savior, and to have that great planned life laid out before us. And once we have done that, we are not only able to use all of the colors of the rainbow, we can love all of the colors of people. Remember our old children's song? Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. We are his children. 
and we are to love one another. But before we can love one another, we must love him, thank him. We are all different, and we have different gifts and talents to use. Don't be confined to what other people tell you. Yes, we have to follow the rules and the laws, but we do not have to be like everybody else, because we're not. We are unique and wonderfully made. Thank you, God, for that. In Jesus' name, I'm Dr. Pepper shaking the salt. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, have me come speak to your group, or maybe just request prayer. Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.